Now, remember what was once called in a reworking of that great journalistic cliché, Climate Gate. Well, it turned on leaked emails from the University of East Anglia, which appeared to cast out on some of the more robust claims about global warming just before an international climate conference. Well, there's another climate conference coming up, and guess what? It's happened again. Our science editor Susan Watts has been figuring out whether those uh, further leaks add up to much. And do they? What's in these emails? Well, the, the timing of this is clearly significant. The, the latest round of international talks on climate change uh, begin on, on Monday. And these 5,000 emails uh, involve some of the same characters, uh, the same period of time as that very first release back in 2009. Now, what's important is that there are snippets of these emails appearing on various climate skeptic websites across the internet. And uh, these have no context. And without that context, it's very difficult to actually work out the true meaning of those original emails. People will want to scour the detail though and uh, many of those I've spoken to uh, this evening have not had the chance to do that. But clearly there is material here that people who are already suspicious about the, the science of climate change will seize on. Uh, so there are, I think in particular exchanges where there are words used such as spin or PR and we've, uh, we've got a sample of, of some of those. So there's one that says uh, I also think the science is being manipulated to put a political spin on it. One says uh, the important thing is to make sure they're losing the PR battle. And another, the political challenge is then to turn this from an argument about the cost, cost of cutting emissions, which the author describes as bad politics, uh, to, uh, to one, uh, one about the value of a stable climate, which uh, the author describes as much better politics. Now, I spoke this evening to one of the, uh, the key characters involved this, a high-profile high scientist called Professor Michael Mann from Penn State University in the States. Now, he was cleared of misconduct uh, last year by his own university over all of the climate gate uh, affair. And he told me that the exchanges show the back and forth of scientists re wrestling with scientific issues, disagreeing with each other, uh, challenging the various interpretations, frank discussions that are really important to the advancement of science. But I put it to him that some of these e emails, uh, clearly the scientists are not just talking about science, they're talking about policy and, and how to deal with the media. Uh, and I asked him if that's territory where scientists really should be getting involved at all. The attacks against science uh, gain the upper hand in the public discourse and in uh, considerations of policy. If scientists aren't there to defend their science and to defend themselves against these attacks. And sometimes that means um, getting uh, involved in the public discourse directly. Are there any other implications of this? Well, I think there will be calls for uh, an examination of the detail to, to see if there's anything fresh in here and not just sort of more of the same, if you like. And it's important to say that three inquiries have concluded that the British scientists involved in ClimateGate did not act fraudulently or try to manipulate data, though they urge scientists to be much more open with what they're doing, with their data and how they're interpreting that. And there is one difference this time round. There's a message posted at the same time as this ba batch of emails uh, where um, the, the person who's posted them is saying that, that spending money on climate change is going to exacerbate poverty. Now, I think the police will be very interested in that message and doing some computer forensics to see if they can learn any more clues about who was involved in that original hack. Thanks very much, Susan.